Intraoperative echo is of two types. One is a transesophageal echo and epiatic echo. Uh, practically, there are certain problems uh, between routinely doing uh, echo uh, transesophageal echo and in the theater. Uh, routinely doing, we are electively getting the information uh, at our leisure. Uh, and uh, the loading conditions are uh, quite different, heart rates will be quite different. Compared to the theater situation where uh, the patient is anesthetized, uh, volumes are different, uh, patients on some medication, so it alters the loading conditions of the heart as well as the contractility. So any assessment uh, uh, during uh, surgery is uh, different from uh, the electoral uh, electively getting the information. This has to be kept in mind before doing uh, intraoperative echocardiogram. Always the best information we get is before uh, patient is going to operating room. And uh, do it in a, in a laboratory where you get all the um, uh, I mean parameters of uh, information and discuss with surgeons beforehand. Especially intraoperative echocardiogram is used mainly ask for, especially all of you know that uh, with uh, for mitral valve repair. Of course, there are several other conditions that intraoperative echo also is used. So these are the limitations. And also, the theater atmosphere is different. And the cautery, um, uh, where will be the ca when cautery is working, you will get the you will not get the correct views. And the disturbance, lot of disturbance is there. So you have to ask the surgeon to interfere in between so to get the correct views. And uh, apart from that. Mm. Uh, the, as I already told you, the loading conditions are also quite different. Uh, before going into the actual uh, talk, I will just tell you my first experience uh, nearly 20 years back. That was a monoplane TE those days available. I was asked to come to the theatre and the uh, anesthesia is worried that uh, saturations are not improving after SVC type of ASD closure. Uh, Sachin, uh, who is Dr. P. V. Sachin Aran, who is working now with Visak, at Visakhapatnam Care Hospital. So he smiled at me and he has something in mind. It is an SVC type of uh, ASD defect. So the saturations are not improving. So I, he asked me, uh, Dr. Raidu, can you verify where the IVC is, the SVC is draining? So I thought it is some, he thought uh, he has left some LSVC. LSVC is still draining into the, uh, desaturating the systemic blood. Uh, then uh, I uh, injected the contrast from the left hand and uh, the whole SVC, it is not LSVC, the whole SVC is draining into LA. So what he did, you know, he censored it. What he, because SVC is astriding, in SVC is astriding into the, uh, there is no roof. SVC is very, very superior uh, uh, ASD, there is no roof. So he connected it to the LA by mistake. Uh, he connected to a ridge to the uh, right side of the SVC. So, SVC is draining straight into the LA current. There is no wonder the saturations are very high, low, very low. Uh, he immediately told him, it is all SVC, is uh, how all SVC is draining into LA. So, immediately he went back into the, uh, uh, the uh, second run, second run and uh, pulled out the patch and connected it to the, uh, SVC is connected now to the right right edge. This is the, my first experience long back. This is uh, in, uh, nearly 20 years back. Probably it happened in uh, NIMS are in Durga we used to go there. Okay, that is, uh, see, you know, epicardial, which has its own advantages, disadvantages. Right, still, transesophageal is the best because it doesn't come in the way of surgeon. So, um, epicardial means we have to keep it in a bag, sterile bag, it has to keep, uh, you know, but some certain advantages are aortic hydroma. Aortic hydroma is best seen with epicardial uh, echocardiogram. Okay, this is a surgeon's view. There is a slight difference between surgeon's view and uh, transesophageal view. Surgeon's view is mainly, um, all of you know, I think you are all uh, very senior uh, cardiothoracic surgeons. Uh, this is a uh, posterior medial, lat uh, anterior medial. Uh, uh, the carpenter has divided into A1, P1, A2 and P2. And uh, uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is A1. This is A2 and P2, this is A1 and A2. This is uh, P3 and uh, this is A3 and P3. So, surgeon, if, if it is prolapsing, surgeon is very interested in repairing this. P, this is P2. P2 prolapse is uh, common with uh, mitral valve prolapse and uh, surgeon effectively, this is a video showing the uh, gross prolapse, actually fly leaflet. 
PML is buckling. Um, most of the buckling is due to the P2 uh, prolapse excess redundancy, redundant wall, redundant posterior mitral leaflet. So severe MR, eccentric MR. Uh, the vena contractor, large uh, wide vena contractor suggest over uh, severe MR. So, all of you as our surgeons, I know you know it is uh, something teaching basics to, uh, but uh, for uh, some cardiologists may be there, quadrangular resection and annuloplasty. What happened? Let us see. See, it became a monocuspid wall. The PML is almost non functional. So, mitral regression has, uh, the valve has been successfully repaired because of the PML prolapse, P2 prolapse. Okay, this Italian physician, uh, uh, not, not physician, sorry, Italian surgeon, uh, Alifri. Alifri has uh, innovative, become quite, quite innovative and uh, made this Alifri stitch. After this, Francis Vizileco shows uh, a picture like this. Uh, the bellies are prolapsing more, bellies are moving more than the tips. Tip movement is very much restricted. And uh, valve has become double orifice, eight shaped orifice after the Alifri stitch. So now percutaneously we are doing uh, the alifri uh, stitch. This is the catheter in position uh, from the left atrium through the mitral valve and uh, the clip, V-shaped clip is seen at the tip of the mitral leaf, at, at the tip of the catheter. After, uh, let us see what happens when the clip is released. The leaflet has become, the orifice has become double barrel, two barrels, two, uh, two orifices, mitral valve. So AVR, AVR is now it is picking up fastly, AVR um, percutaneous mitral I mean, replacement that is called TAVI, tran transiotic wall implantation. Um, after, impl after deployment of the wall, you can see the wall is sitting very well. The, after balloon dilatation, the stents are sitting well and uh, leaflets are fully mobile. There is no stenosis. Color Doppler shows only my layer. So a successful TAVI. It can be seen classically with a transesophageal echocardiogram. This is a three-dimensional echocardiogram of a, a SVC type of ASD. As I told you, this uh, identifying this is problem. This is very important because uh, SVC may be astriding, as I told you in the beginning, in one of the illustration case I, I did. I told you. So, so what surgeons want to know? Long back, uh, the, uh, Dr. Gopichand has told me one proverb. Uh, what is that? Uh, you, so I am at the other end. So I am. So surgeon asks anything. So what? What is lying to ask? See, for any repair, first of all, you know adequacy of the repair. First, he asks me uh, as the wall is adequately repaired or not. See, annular ring position. He want to know. Sometimes dehiscence mm -hmm. happens. After wall replacement, sometimes what happens? The wall becomes stenotic. So gradients, gradients, mean gradient more than five uh, is indicating that we have to uh, redo again. We have to redo the operation again. And uh, sometimes valves get stuck because of the caudal excess cauda, uh, caudal uh, preservation technique. When caudal preservation technique is done, uh, one of the cauda may get caught up in the opening of the mitral leaflets and uh, valve may get stuck. I heard that one of his while discussion, sometimes the valve is kept in the opposite direction. So it is not at all opening. So they, they don't come up from bypass. But uh, very rare, that such type of, and uh, you know, after valve replacement, uh, there may be alluvial obstruction, which has to be relieved. Uh, we have to verify whether it is uh, due to loading conditions. And de airing minimally invasive cardiac surgery. Now it is becoming very, very co common, minimally invasive. In that, uh, the cannula position is very important. Cannula position has to be has to be verified with intraoperative echo, intraoperative echo only. Uh, then aortic is drama. This we routinely do for neurological problems. And uh, surgeon would like to know on the table whether any adroma is coming in the way because it's, any embolization is very quite uh, catastrophic. And shunts, any residual shunts are left. Um, then, okay, what, what, what more they want to know is uh, then sometimes they are failed to win bypass. Uh, surgeons are better people than to know all these things. Uh, stuck wall, whenever and alvi RV function, especially for uh, for uh, bypass surgery, the indication of TE is uh, uh, controversial, debatable. 
where, but whenever the LUF dysfunction is there or high risk group, always ask for a transitive is echo. When LU function is good, uh, no complex procedure. Uh, T is uh, some insurance companies they don't uh, uh, patronize that uh, cost also. But uh, LV dysfunction is there, high risk group in CABG also transitive is echo is very essential. And uh, transitive utility of transitive echo is uh, increasing. I many times I was uh, pulled from the OP uh, to see for uh, such things. Uh, it is a little bit uh, inconvenience, uh, embarrassing for us to deny, uh, but we'll try to sep uh, we, we decided to ma train a separate staff for this. Uh, okay, see this is what I am telling the illustration case. Then uh, TE and mitral wall repair, uh, uh, whether the valve is repair, posterior leaflet pathology is easily repairable, as all of you know. Any redundant tissue is more repairable than scar tissue. Annular dilatation, we'll put annular. AML integrity, that is most important. The first thing uh, our surgeons ask is, how is the AML? AML length is one of the important aspects because PML, they can stitch anyway and uh, the wall becomes monocuspid. And uh, cleft swell fractions, all of you know that we can be repaired very well. Caudal and papillary muscle, there are several procedures, scardoplasty, strange plasty, uh, papillary muscle uh, flowering, several things, all of you are well versed in all these procedures. So, uh, suppose there is a residual major regurgitation, 1 plus MR, accept it or give phenylephrine. If it is increasing, you have to redo it. If more than two, surgery is required. Uh, SAM, uh, increase ventricular volume and uh, stop inotropics. If these measures fail, not successful, uh, uh, the valve, the resurgery is necessary. Uh, sometimes, occasionally, uh, annulus may get uh, detached. <coughs> then we have, to, we have to go for the second pump, another pump run and residual mitral stenosis. Significant tricuspid regurgitation. Tricuspid regurgitation now not just uh, uh, stitch, not annuloplasty. It is, uh, we have to use a ring in severe tricuspid regurgitation. Uh, we have a bad experience. We made, a, we asked for a surgeon um, to keep the ring. The ring is kept ready and uh, surgeon somehow took it light. He did DVAGAS. Postoperatively, the stitch went, gave away and she had a torrential ATR. Platelets down, everything down, we lost the patient. It was a very bad experience. So, always for tricuspid valve, any pathology, uh, if not repairable, always have a look and uh, put a ring there. Uh, it is, I think for you, it is not a very big procedure. Always tricuspid valve ring is becoming famous, especially when the valve ring is very wide and uh, valve pathology is there and uh, long-standing tricuspid regurgitation. Better put a ring, never take light tricuspid regurgitation. Uh, lightly, tricuspid valve pathology very lightly. Okay, then raison valve dysfunction, anything, other things we, we all of you know. P pre pump, SS, you have to assess severity and also after pump, you have to see whether there is any residual MR. Then uh, uh, any, any uh, SAM, LVOT obstruction after pump, assess the function, function, pump function is another important area, but always there will be limitations in uh, theater. Loading conditions are altered, so, um, the surgeon will be busy with his own procedure and many times uh, the cardiologist will be uh, uh, pulled inside and asked for to stay back, uh, leaving all his work. Of course, we have to prepare a separate team. I can't deny that the surgeons are very important people for us. We have to honor them. We, I have, we have to honor the surgeons because they deliver the goods. Um, they are the real heroes of uh, the cardiology, of course. We collect patients only, but the real work is done by surgeons. We have, I have great respect towards the most of the surgeons. Okay, to sum up, to sum up, you know, the my transfusal echo is mainly done for mitral wall uh, repair, mainly done. And of course, other, there are several other indications. The ultimate goal of the transfusal echo is uh, to have a competent wall as far as possible. Uh, and uh, see if any um, residual mitral regurgitation is left, always uh, go back and have a second surgery. And uh, I thank all of you for your patience listening. <coughs> thank you, Dr. Raidu, for the important messages. I may add uh, one or two examples where intraoperative echo really helped uh, uh, in our own personal experience. There was a case of LA mixoma that Ram Subramanian operated. There was a significant severe MR. 
So whether this is due to just a mechanical impingement of the myxoma on the mitral wall or the valve itself got intrinsically damaged and needs replacement, that is the question to be answered. So after he removed the tumor, he went on again uh, off the pump and then we re reassessed, there was severe MR. So then he again went in and re replaced that mitral wall. One of the examples where it becomes very handy. The other one is actually from literature I have never seen. During mitral wall replacement sometimes, the sutures may catch the circumflex. This is theoretical but it was reported in literature, may end up in problems during. It can be immediately identified by an intraoperative echo as a new wall motion abnormality in the circumflex territory. And then to overcome the problem of uh, lack of cardiologist presence in the theatre and requirement for a long time, I think now the cardiac anesthetists themselves are getting trained in this so that uh, they need not disturb the cardiologist. I saw Dr. Murali there, I think he was actually uh, spreading this course intraoperative TE for anesthetists. So these are my comments. Any other comments from the other surgeons? Because this is a surgical... Uh, when, um, in right dominant system, the annulus, I mean, circumflex will be little away. Whereas, uh, if a circumflex is dominant, giving rise to PDA, it will be close to the annulus. And in such cases, uh, uh, when we are, they are doing annual plasty, one has to be a little gay. Probably that will help a uh, practical point, I thought. I think you are very right. Actually, these days it's very difficult to ask cardiologists to come to the theatre and do TEA because they are busy clinicians as such. And we take a long time. Sometimes we want to see pre-op and then we want to come off and then see and then we want to go on. All this is not possible. That's why for the last eight years our NSCs have been doing this TEA. And uh, it's good that the cardiologists have trained them well in their lab and that helps us a lot. And the second thing is, Dr. Raidu said the point very well. See, today T is an essential thing in the cardiac surgeon's ornamentarium in the theatre. For all patients, irrespective of better to use TEE, maybe sometimes you can get away for people with a good LV function coronary bypass. But as you said, if we have a problem with these people, immediately you should put it because this is one way you can identify a new a wall motion abnormality because every time you put a graft doesn't mean that the grafts are open. Sometimes we may even close the native artery and the graft may not be good. So this is another thing that has to be kept. And I think today it should become a standard of care in the operating room. And the NSCs also should learn that and be, take participation in that. One of the ways of looking for a patent, immediate patency of graft is inject some contrast into the iota and look at the myocardial perfusion not uh, real bubbles, but there are any contrast. You can inject so that you know if that area is not getting opacified uh, in the transgastric view, you know the graft is uh, closed on the table and probably can go back and put a graft.